Tonight, we also have stunning information about a systematic program run by the Russian government to take Ukrainian children and re-educate and indoctrinate them in camps in Russia and Crimea. Some of the kids are believed to have been given weapons training, and others have been sent to live with foster families or even put up for adoption in Russia. There's a new report documenting a network of camps, 43 of them in all, across Russia and occupied Crimea, where thousands of Ukrainian children have so far been taken against international law. So there's a lot to get to tonight. We begin with the story behind the missile attack on the aid workers. And we warn you, some of the video you'll see is hard to watch. Seeing as Matthew Chance did the reporting, he joins us now. What more can you tell us about this attack? Yeah, an absolutely terrible attack, of course. And colleagues of Pete Reid now saying that they believe he was the victim of a targeted strike by Russian forces using a laser-guided anti-tank missile. The thing about the important thing about those kinds of weapons is they require line of sight, Anderson, so they're very deliberate indeed. Well, CNN has now obtained exclusive video of the actual moment that took, took place on February the 2nd, uh, a short time ago. Uh, and again, colleagues of Pete Reed saying it underlines and illustrates the despicable tactics, as they called it, being used by Russia against medics in the war zone. These are the final seconds before volunteer medics in Ukraine, including American Pete Reed, seen here exiting the white van, come under vicious attack. The images obtained exclusively by CNN show the explosion ripping through the scene, leaving Reed among the dead. But incredibly, you can also hear the screams of survivors. Survivors like Erko, a volunteer from Estonia, witnessing all of this from just feet away. Yeah, the last one second that I remember before the blast, uh, or when the blast happened, I saw the big ball of flame. And uh, it was like instantly I, my thoughts were the darkest that can be. Volunteer medics working in Bakhmut are no strangers to the extreme violence ravaging this city. Fierce fighting for control, making it one of Ukraine's deadliest front lines. Soldiers dubbing it a meat grinder. But the part of town where the medics were answering their emergency call on February the 2nd seemed relatively calm. So look, when you arrived at this scene where you'd had these reports of casualties and you saw the casualties there, was there any fighting going on? Was there any artillery shells coming in close by that you would have, would have made you aware that this was a particularly dangerous spot? Uh, no, no. It was, uh, it was actually awfully quiet there. Didn't get no warning because usually yeah, you can hear when, when the rounds come in, uh, you can hear the whistling noise. That determines that uh, there is some mortar or artillery shell coming in. Uh, there wasn't nothing like this. And he catches the exact moment on his own cell phone. A frame-by-frame -frame analysis shows what military experts tell CNN is an anti-tank missile striking the vehicle a weapon that requires line-of-sight targeting to be this accurate. Minutes later, the medic's dash cam records a second strike. Slow motion revealing it's yet another anti-tank missile. It was observed and uh, aimed directly and uh, to be sure that it's going to be perfect hit, they waited until the complete uh, stop and uh, after that they instantly Fired. So do you think that you were deliberately targeted by the other side? Uh, yes, I think uh, that there is not much of a de debate about it. They, they shot two different uh, vehicles. They tried to hit another one also. So they were ready. They were prepared. Russia has repeatedly denied deliberately targeting civilians. But over this gruesome video of the aftermath, the Russian private military company Wagner says the volunteer medics were foreign mercenaries hit by what it calls an accurate strike. 
even for humanitarian volunteers in this Bakhmut meat grinder. Protection, it seems, is scarce. I think it's so incredible. I want to show this video just one more, one more time of this targeted attack because you get a sense just how quiet it was right before this. I mean, there's no, there's no indication that, that this is about to happen. Did the rescue work you spoke to give any more clarity about why the Russians might be target, targeting medics in this area? Um, they, they did, yeah. You, you're right to point out how quiet it is. I mean, I've been to Bakhmut myself, and it is extremely noisy when there is fighting going on. And so it really is striking the silence that you can hear sort of in the background there. In, in terms of, you know, why they would have been targeted, well, what the medics say is that, look, the Russians know very well these volunteers from the United States, from other countries, are doing enormous amounts of good to the civilian population inside these areas. Sometimes they're the only sort of medical presence on the ground. And the Russians, they say, are determined to stop that, to, to take that away, to deter these people from going to the front lines. Uh, the medic I spoke to in that report, Erko, said for his part, it's, it's not going to work. He's determined to go back and says he'll be back near the front lines in just a couple of weeks, Anderson. Wow. I also just want to show a still image again where you see that, that missile. I mean, I've never seen an image like this. You, that It took me a while to, to actually even see the missile. Once I realized it was parallel to the ground, you also see where uh, Mr. Reed and the others were. The van that they were in, the medics were in, I know the van that the, the man who pulled up, uh, from you know, who took the video was in, that was clearly marked. Does did did the van that Mr. Reed was in and the others Pete Reed was in did that was that uh, marked at all as a as a medics van? It, it doesn't seem to be, does it? I mean, it looks like a white civilian van. I mean, I, I understand that inside it's converted into into an ambulance, but it, it doesn't have the sort of big red crosses daubed on it that you might expect um, in, in that kind of location. Look, I mean, what the medics say is that th there's no way this could have been mistaken for anything other than an ambulance, simply because. These medical teams, Pete Reed included, had been working in Bakhmut for months upon months. And the Russians knew very well what they were doing, what these medical sort of volunteers of the kind of action they've been involved in and the kind of way they work. They say there's no way this could have been mistaken for anything military at all, mm. which, again, you know, underlines for them this idea that they were particularly watched and then targeted by Russian forces. Yeah, and as you said, they tried to get another vehicle as well with another uh, missile. Uh, Matthew, appreciate the report. Thank you.